The ways in which you fit technology into your lesson plans and curriculum largely depend on how many computers you have available for use. In addition to the number of available computers, you'll need to consider a couple of other things, such as how you will use the computers and how your students will use the computers. Even having one computer in the classroom makes a significant impact on the learning environment. That one computer can go a long way if you project the monitor's image onto a wall or large projection screen for the whole class to view. In fact, the most common use for a computer in a single computer classroom is for the instructor to use it as a presentation tool or as a teaching tool. For instance, at the beginning of the school year, you could use the computer to present your class rules, syllabus, required supplies, or anything else you think your students should know from the start. Or, while teaching, you might use it to present photographs, data, or information not available in your students' textbooks. As a teaching tool, you might use the computer to show students how to create simple newsletters using word processing or desktop publishing programs. The next day, you could take your class to the school computer lab, provided your school has one, where your students could practice layout techniques on their own computers. And don't forget all the work you have to do behind the scenes. With the proper software, computers can be extremely versatile. So even with just one computer, you can effectively perform many classroom duties. It can be used to keep track of students, parents, and class materials, as well as for communicating, researching, and creating handouts and lesson plans. So you see, it's extremely beneficial to have even just one computer in the classroom. We've looked at how a single computer can be used as a presentation tool, a teaching tool, and a classroom organization tool. Listed are other uses for a single computer in a classroom. Mark off the ones that are useful to you, and then click Next to learn about other integration plans. If you're fortunate enough to have more than one computer in your classroom, then you have even more integration options. All of the functions a computer serves in a single computer class also apply to a multi-computer class. The availability of more computers, however, requires some planning as to how you want those computers to be used. For instance, if you have control over what software gets installed, should you add the same software to all computers, or should you create separate centers, each one assigned to a computer that has only relevant software installed? Although not always the case, having the same software on all computers is commonly used for individual learning, while centers with computers are often geared toward group work. For example, if you teach a lesson on marine life, you could have students go to individual computers, research their favorite marine animal via the web or CD encyclopedias, and then use drawing software to create a drawing of their chosen animal. If the drawing software were not available on all computers, students working in a group would have to decide on and create their favorite animal. Your answers to these questions should be based on several factors, including your overall teaching objectives, curriculum, and the amount of space available in your classroom. How you prepare your classroom for technology integration depends on the number of computers you have in the class, as well as how you answer the questions we've introduced in this lesson. With careful consideration, you should come up with an integration strategy that best fits your goals, curriculum, and environment. Here are some real-life examples of how the concepts discussed in this lesson could be used in a classroom, either as a teaching tool or an administrative aid.